In this video, I'll be assembling the Logosol F2 Plus chain sawmill. Um, the kit comes in seven boxes uh, with two log lifters, uh, four rail boxes, and one mount for the saw itself. Logosol has done a pretty thorough job uh, in packing everything in, so just unpacking everything took quite a while. I started by sorting all the bits and pieces into separate containers uh, to speed up the process. And as you can see in the back, uh, I've already assembled one of the log lifters in advance. I learned that if you used uh, a ratchet and a drill uh, with the hex bit and just making sure that all the pieces are sorted out in advance, uh, everything goes much faster. Pretty much all the joints are comprised of steel brackets fastened with through hex bolts with corresponding knots. The fit and the finish of the Logosol is pretty good on the F2 Plus. But there are a few places where the tolerances aren't that great, so I used a square to just square things up and make sure everything is aligned. A few places um, you were asked to screw bolts right into the aluminum with no pre-threading, uh, and that felt a little bit sketchy, but with some lubricants that works just fine. These small mounts are used in the pulley system and holds the rope that is used in the lifting mechanism. It seemed a little bit flimsy, but um, in real tests after I assembled it, it held up quite great, even on the really big and heavy logs. What I'm assembling here is the part that holds the lifting mechanism. The assembly of the ratchet cam and the ratchet holder confused me quite a bit. If you notice on the actual holder that I'm holding, You'll see a notch in the holder, and that's where your cam is supposed to go. Also, you can screw in the Allen bolt after you have assembled the, the cam and the spring. And that's much easier than trying to do it in advance. It has a ratcheting uh, mechanism that you can twist to loosen or lock the lifting mechanisms. Moving on to the panel that holds the ratchet bar, um, this is a tight fit, so make sure to not tighten it. You'll need to adjust it afterwards in the field right anyway. Here I'm assembling the horizontal bar that sits on top of the log lifters and uh, this is where the log is resting when in use. Also, one of my ratchet bars had a pretty significant bow in it so I had to grind down a little bit on it of a taper in the end to make it fit. Here you can see the pulley system being assembled. The way it works is that there's a lifting line that is wound up using a crank rod uh, and the force is multiplied by the line running through multiple pulleys. This effectively multiplies the force that is needed to lift heavy logs. I was actually quite surprised at how easy it was to crank even for the, the most heavy logs. Now I'm starting to assemble the rail sections. This is the part of the build that I felt was the most flimsy. First of all, it's pretty easy to get it misaligned and secondly, it doesn't really hold up together on its own. It's held together with some internal aluminum X brackets and some steel braces on the outside. The parts that I'm assembling here is what makes up the struts that you slide onto the log lifters when you are assembling the mill in the field. Uh, attached to them are measurements that allow you to keep track of the height on each side so you can make sure you get parallel cuts. Here you can see the front stretcher. I was actually a bit confused uh, when I assembled this because I had twice as many parts as the guide uh, called for, but I found a way to use them all. So trying to figure out how to keep this thing level on the top of the workbench was quite a challenge. I had to fiddle around and do a few assemblies and disassemblies in order to make it work. Uh, and it really needs to be straight and flat. Otherwise the logs that you uh, will mill up will end up being not being straight and flat as well. So it's really important. If you have a flat floor, uh, which I don't, um, that would be a much better bet, I think. 
You can, of course, adjust it afterwards, but it's easier to just get it right in the beginning. Here I'm assembling uh, the whole thing for the first time, uh, and it looks really nice. The fit between the, the lifters and the guide rail was a bit tight, so I chamfered the edges a bit to make sure it was easier to assemble the, uh, assemble the whole thing in field. I had to mess around a bit to make sure it lifted the same amount with the same amount of cranks on both leg log lifters, but eventually I got it sorted pretty quickly. And then I moved on to installing the chainsaw carriage. This part is pretty straightforward. Uh, my saw is a secondhand steel MS-880. I believe this is the largest saw that steel manufactures and it's a beast of a chainsaw weighing in at uh, over 10 kilos or 22 pounds. Here I'm testing out how easily the saw glides. I decided to make the joints smooth uh, on the rails by sanding them down. It's probably a stupid idea since the aluminum loses its protective and anodization but my OCD just wanted to get it perfectly flat. I afterwards I waxed the rail and the whole thing was smooth and silky and worked pretty good. All in all, this is a stir pretty sturdy mill and straightforward assembly process, but if I'm to be honest, I think Logosol could have done a, a, a better job in their construction of the mill. In some future videos, I'll show you some uh, small mod modifications that I've done uh, that I think should actually be part of the design. In the next video, I'll take you through the milling process and share my experiences milling up some lumber.